Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are off on a secret mission. A secret mission which uses a number of mods which I shall name right now before I get asked in the comments a million times. So I am using the fixed camera mod, which lets me litter my vehicle with a fixed cameras that let me uh, look at things. I'm using the Trust Pack which uh, lets me add some new objects here and there, so, some basically like lattice work uh, vehicle components. And finally, I am using the robotics pack, and we'll see what that's for later. Anyway, we this secret mission involves launching a spy satellite into orbit, now obviously to spy on the other space center. So to do this, we are heading into a, a polar orbit. Now, of course, this is a militarily sensitive uh, sensitive mission and we want to uh, put well we want to take steps to make sure we aren't observed and that our cover story is good so uh, here we are heading up into orbit you see that we have a top stage which includes the satellite payload we're heading south uh, out of this continent and we want to avoid people in the other continent seeing what we're up to so once we get ourselves up you can see there's another continent over there and um, we don't want them to really know what's going on because this is a super secret mission so once we do orbital insertion there is a special set of countermeasures which we're going to deploy just wait you see obviously anyone on the planet can see this going on so well, first of all, we're going to launch some uh, extra debris, partly to uh, distract radar systems, and secondly, so we can put out our cover story saying that we did a space launch, but it unfortunately met with an accident and broke up. Now, of course, we're pointing this over the various angles to make sure the distribution of the debris is um, uniform as possible. This thing will be left in the middle, and as the objects rotate around the orbit, their differential velocities will drag everything out into an expanding cloud of debris, uh, which will make it look like a, a accident did indeed habit happen. Anyway, now that we are over the sparsely populated South Pole of Kerbin, this is where the real work starts. Anber Kerman is not your regular Kerbal astronaut. He is a man of great... Um, of great importance. <laughs> he is the equivalent of a Kerbal 007. He is one of the few people trusted to this mission. So they jettison the stage and he now has to do some hands-on work with this um, this special payload. And you see, this special this payload was so important. It contains um, top secret electronics. And uh, it came primed with a bunch of explosives that would destroy it should contact be lost. And the only way to disable these was for Mr. Kerman here to actually deactivate them manually. So he literally was flying a bomb into orbit. Not just sitting on a pile of fuel, but a literal bomb. Now he uh, continues to fly around and examine this um, payload removing a number of uh, other security features, leaving his mark on it, and of course posing for some publicity shots for his friends back home, because, you know, that's how they do it. Uh, yeah, look at those uh, look at those awesome flashlights, uh, he helmet lights, so he can examine the exterior of this in the darkness as the sun sets over the southern pole of this uh, planet. And of course, he now has to inspect his own spaceship, which will be carrying him home. Now, uh, this spacecraft, as you see, is a, an airplane. It's not a simple capsule, and that's important because he will have to make sure he can fly home and not land over enemy territory, which means he needs a lot more atmospheric control than your average pod. There he is posing for a, a photograph for the postcard, I guess, from his uh, greetings from a secret mission. Wish you were here. But anyway, the work is over. He is now getting back inside the capsule or getting back inside his spacecraft and we're going to separate very carefully from this. So we're going to be careful with those uh, reaction thrusters. We don't want to damage those sensitive electronics. But uh, once we get away a little, we'll be able to start testing this orbital camera system. Now, um, one of the things you'll see, the spacecraft is using reaction fuel, and this has reaction thrusters, but 
The main way it's going to steer itself is using reaction control wheels. Now, this is, <laughs> these reaction control wheels I've, of course, made using the Rototron from the robotics pack and uh, RCS fuel tanks. And you can see I'm just steering this using the 7, 8, 9, and 0 keys. And as I push these keys, these rotate, and uh, the object moves. I've also set up four cameras around it with different fields of view. And you can see me kind of try to focus on the the rocket that was used to put ourselves into orbit and uh, by turning around we can also take a look at the spacecraft which is sitting parked near us receding well it's not so much parked it's receding but at different zoom levels we can get a look at more and more detail uh, of course the game isn't quite designed for this and we start to see some artifacts but uh, maybe this will get fixed in some future version who knows I'm pretty sure it's a low priority but look at that high resolution camera able to discern details at a great distance from the, the object Hopefully we'll be able to get some real information on the um, enemy space center, huh? But uh, yeah, the cameras work regardless of which spacecraft you're in control as long as they're within two and a half kilometers. So you see here I'm controlling the space plane, but the camera on the uh, satellite is the one that's providing the information. So as it's got even further out, we can again try the zooming on this. Again, I just used four different parameters, four different cameras, and I had to manually edit the craft file to, to create the different zoom levels. There we are at maximum zoom. I think we're like a couple of kilometers away by now. Anyway, the, sat the telescope is deployed. It is time to deorbit. Uh, we're going to use RCS to deorbit, and we want to aim for... We want to avoid flying over hostile territory. That's the thing. Now, the problem is that in the time we have been in orbit, the planet Kerbin has rotated. So we're in a polar orbit. We had to go in a polar orbit so we could cover the entire planet. Um, but that, and that means that the planet has rotated underneath us. And we don't want to go over that continent to the left there because that's the same continent as that uh, space center. And we don't want them to see what's going on which is why we've got this debris cloud, but we certainly don't want to land on their territory, which is why we have the plane. The plane will give us a level of control, specifically what this called is cross-range capability. And this was something that the military requested on the space shuttle. They, they um, required that the space shuttle, after a single orbit, a single polar orbit should be able to return to the US and so they requested something like a thousand miles worth of cross-range capability which is why it had way bigger wings than a lot of the earlier designs and it turns out it was never used in that capacity but uh, we can't quite do that because the stubby wings and the, the game mechanics really don't let us get as much control. So instead, I've built an actual plane with uh, turbojets, or not so much turbojets, but basic jet engines. So you can see that little bit of land ahead of us. We do not want to go there, so we need to make a turn to the east before we get too close. We've got to bleed off enough velocity and turn this very carefully. There is no, um, there's no avionics package on this, so it has a nasty habit of spinning out of control. I tried this several times and I lost it on more than one occasion. Uh, so I'm, you can see me plugging numbers in and asking it to turn very slowly. Um, but it does catch. The other way I wanted to do this, uh, and I failed repeatedly, was to make some comment about dropping it down below radar level and then making the turn, but that usually ended up with me just crashing into the surface or into the ocean, which wasn't great. So here he is, he's making his turn uh, very carefully, with trying to maintain some level of uh, control all the way over here, and we're going to aim for that little shoulder of land uh, on the same continent as the re as the Kerbal Space Center. Um, that way it will be returning over home territory. Now there's no landing gear on this. It is going to make a landing using a parachute. But yeah, once once we get our um, once we get everything figured out, it's relatively easy to fly. We we run at about one third thrust and we set our heading roughly towards the space center and then once we're over land we cut the thrust and try to pitch up and immediately lose control. Uh, remember what I said about the lack of avionics? But that's okay, we just deploy the parachutes uh, and that will bring us the right side up once we uh, slow down enough. There we go. 
and hopefully the spacecraft doesn't get torn apart. Uh, yeah, they deploy. We can use the jet engines to reduce our vertical velocity from about 10 to about 5. And that should let us soft land. We also have the RCS to help us just a little. And there we are, beautiful landing. It, well, except for the cockpit falling off. But, you know, the guy is safe. And Burkerman is able to get picked up by the relevant uh, security agencies and uh, his mission can be kept secret. Um... Now let's go and take a look and see how well this camera system works. So you can see it now that the orbit uh, is pretty full of debris now. It's certainly harder to pick the object out from the real, uh, from the debris surrounding it, from all that chaff. But uh, there it is in the middle. And as you see on the second orbit round on a 100 kilometer orbit, it actually passes relatively close to the uh, target space center. Maybe if I'd given it a little higher altitude, it would have rotated further. But taking control, I can rotate the camera and see if we can see what we want to see. Uh, there is this ring of mountains, and in the middle of that, you can just about make out the twinkling of the space center. Let us ha try some higher zooms to see what uh, we can be revealed. Um, and things kind of start to look weird and glitchy. Uh, so I don't know what's going on here, but as you can see, the there's different graphical layers. The, the actual surface layer with the object seems to be at one zoom, whereas the planet is remaining at another zoom. Uh, I think field of view doesn't work quite correctly with the cameras. So, well, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of working, but there are optical artifacts. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>